Hey there guys, Elton here. Hope you're all doing okay during this... Well, depending where you are, it's a lockdown, or here in Montreal, we're close to that. And unfortunately, maybe inching closer, but uh, I hope not. Definitely not, because you guys, you know me. I love to get out there and get some fresh air and exercise and bring you what I see through my eyes in those walking videos or vehicles. And even though considering I'm uh, pretty limited limited right now to where I can go. I kind of feel like I'm stuck on an island, in a way, after three weeks of this now. Hey, look, it's my 59-inch win. And it's funny, I haven't put away those winter boots and the uh, and that um, plastic uh, mat, well, if I can call it that, because today is Wednesday, um, April 8th, my mom's birthday, and... Uh, they're calling for snow on Friday, so that's uh, kind of a drag, you know? Yeah. Anyway, so for some time I've wanted to do a video of, uh, of some of my pictures I've done before, and I kind of like lost sight of that for a while, you know? I'm like, yeah, I gotta, I keep thinking I gotta do a video of this, that, you know, and, and I didn't get around to it. And finally, I don't know, this evening I'm feeling pretty good, and I watched this video a few minutes ago, I watched some videos of... Uh, some uh, animated uh, recreation of plane crashes and disasters and stuff. And then I watched uh, Neil Diamond uh, two weeks ago who uh, sang uh, Sweet Caroline uh, uh, with acoustic guitar uh, next to a fireplace. It's quite nice. So, anyway, uh, so I'm not filming with the phone. As you can see, she's charging there. No, I'm filming with the good old Canon 620HS and currently set at a, uh, should I say, indoor lighting um, uh, level uh, setting because uh, unlike how I like to film, usually on the setting of neon light and uh, also like a red filter, well, it doesn't look too good with these pictures as I tested. So anyway, we're gonna uh, show you some pictures I've taken any time between probably 1999 and uh, probably 2003 or four. so. Oh, this by the way? Yeah, that's my uh, motorcycle file. That's a whole bunch of my vintage motorcycle ads. I'm gonna get to that soon. That is an idea I got today. When I thought I was going to sell a buck, a buck a dollar ad I have in here. And the guy that never came, the fucking guy. May he rot in fucking hell. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But seriously, you know, when somebody says they're going to come buy something to, from you and they don't come, that's irritating. It's just a waste of time. Thanks for wasting my time. Okay, so uh, let's get to it. Okay, so back in 2002, I had the utmost privilege, not only of being friends with uh, the uh, what I call the AMC King of Canada, Mr. James Mays, but we went down to all the way to Kenosha, Wisconsin for the 100th anniversary of American Motors Corporation, which of course included its parent companies that uh, were merged with them at one time or another, which was Hudson and Nash and Jeep and Kaiser. And uh, this right here uh, was parked, uh, I think, at a hotel next to ours. As you can see, it's a beautiful, looks like a mint 60 Rambler wagon. Just gorgeous green paint. Anyway, I don't want to spend too much time on these pictures because you can see there's a lot of them, so I'm probably going to have to friggin' do this in two parts, you know? Oop, drop the envelope. Where I used to get my photos developed and enlarged. Of course, here this is Quebec, so we, it was called instead Centre Japonais de la Photo. Not Japan Camera. Okay, uh, so here now we have, again in Kenosha, but at one of the cruise nights they had that weekend, uh, that week, I don't know, I guess in July, and it was uh, this really retro, old-school looking drive-in restaurant. And here's this, there's all, it was just fucking filled with AMC. It was just beautiful. It was amazing. And here's a 65 AMC, AMC Classic. That was the first official year, year for AMC, American Motors. And, uh, of course, if you guys knew that about this car, I didn't have to tell you nothing. Eh? Now, mind you, of course, I have like an extra color feature added on this camera, so... Things are, are looking even nicer than what I'm showing you. Uh, turning now to um, Cornwall, I believe. In, oh, that was in 2002, if I didn't mention that, by the way. Amazing trip. Uh, this right here was uh, in uh, Cornwall, I think, at the Upper Canada Village. There used to be a, a uh, I, th I think, a yearly show, I guess, anyway, of classic cars. And this is just the most beautiful... Uh, what do you call this? It's like a, not a post-war, but a pre-war Chevy pickup done as a hot rod. I, you just gotta fucking love that 
iconic waterfall grill. I mean, mamma mia. It's just like those Buicks from that time, you know, those toothy grills, just an era that'll never, ever, ever come back again. Neither will this era of cars, this uh, Circa 67 Canadian Acadian uh, two-door post. I'm noticing some graininess here. I'm wondering if I should turn, take this camera down a peg maybe on the... Uh, I'm gonna try something here. I stop this a second. Yeah, that. By the way, that was in uh, I don't know, 2000 in Pierrefonds here in Montreal at the Scratch uh, uh, Weekly Shows. That was a great show. Uh, you know, there's so many memories I have that you wish they could have lasted longer. You know, here's a uh, fantastic uh, 50 to 52 Cadillac limousine. Yeah, I'm gonna stop this a second. See if I can fix that up. Well, you know what? Sorry about the graininess. I mean, you know, when you're a perfectionist, that's actually one aspect of this camera I don't like. And unfortunately, that's where it shows as cheap is, is the, uh, the the graininess of uh, quality of an image if it's not really bright, you know, in terms of lighting. And it's not like it's really dark in here, but it's not like it's really bright either. But anyway, whatever. I mean, that's something that this phone is amazing for, but uh, the camera is not uh, not fantastic like it used to be. Uh, it's color. I don't know the colors off among a couple other things, but anyway, so whatever this right here I didn't mention but that's at the orange julep back about 20 years ago and uh, Thankfully that place even though it's owned by the Chinese they kept up the tradition of the, the car shows going on over there in the summer and it's people I know guys going there fucking 20 years man. A lot of people know, know me there It's nice when you go there and you're recognized like hey McFall or hey Elton uh, How's it going? And you know, that's cool. I mean, uh so it's all about. It's not just about the car. It's about friendliness, camaraderie. I knew this guy, this rockabilly cat. He had this 60... Well, it sounds like a joke I'm going with this. Anyway, he had this rare, very rare 61 Oldsmobile F85. Uh, I took this picture in 2003, but I did a photo shoot of it two years earlier with a crappy defective Vividar camera. Maybe you'll see those pics one day. And this is, uh, I don't know, Saint Laurent Street or something. And fuck, it was so cool because this car was completely original. It had the first year that the aluminum, first aluminum V8, 215 cubic inch. Uh, ah, just fantastic. Oddly enough, uh, GM sold that, uh, the uh, the rights to build that engine to the Brits, to um, British Leyland. They put that in their Land Rover. Go figure. And then we have a, uh, I don't know, 37, 8, 9, 10, uh, 40 Packard, upstate New York. Uh, where was it? Uh, fuck, I don't know. Probably uh, east of Malone, New York, not far from the Quebec border. Lovely old car, isn't it? Funny too to fall upon this because I just sent an ad of this exact same car to my friend Scott in Alberta out in Cold War Motors. There, check out his channel, Cold War Motors. If you like, you know, some swearing and some guys are not all fucking clean and spick and span and cars, but just realness, you know, like real genuine people, the type of people you know don't judge a book by its cover. Pretty much like me, I guess. Yeah. And uh, me and Scott were good friends, even though we never met there. But that guy, he puts a hell of a good show for for, for the old school cats and uh, those of us who can't get enough of these earth-killing vintage machines. Ugh, gorgeous. My dream car. One of my dream cars, definitely. 58 Oldsmobile, 98, seen in Granby, Quebec. Uh, 1999. I remember the owner told me it cost him $25,000, I think, just to... Uh, uh, restore the car and the chrome alone they called them chromes mobiles was amazing I just 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 so much chrome the uh, the gas filler door was right here in the uh, rocket shaped like taillight bezel just amazing I even would been lucky to sit in three of these different cars just but it's funny because in that year and before uh, the seats were they were mounted higher um, and the windshield, you know, the glass before like 59, the glass and all that all around, it was smaller. And so when you're tall like me at six foot three, you, you know, it's not very comfortable, I have to say, unless you're sitting in the back. And that's uh, very annoying, um, actually, because, you know, like it, it, the seat is comfortable. You know, you have this fucking massive wheel and this chrome and this panoramic windshield, which makes it look like a fucking spaceship. But... Again, that's where being tall is not everything. Speaking of Oldsmobiles, here's a, uh, again, uh, probably not far where that Packard was back in 2002. Again, around the same time 
39 Oldsmobile, not too common. Very looking, very original. At that time, I th I think they were mostly straight sixes at that time. But I don't know. What do I know? I'm not an expert on cars in the 30s. Picture more Oldsmobiles. Here's one in uh, Granby, Quebec, when I went with my friend Rene in 99. Man, we even slept in a 79 Monarch. We went there so that we could go there really bright and early. Of course, that wasn't my idea. I'm sure that was my friend's idea. Because that is, uh, has become the, the uh, as you can see from a lot of my videos of cars I filmed at that show just from last year, uh, last July. I mean, fuck, it's, it's, the, um, it's the largest classic car show in Canada. And here is back in, uh, again, 21 years ago, and a 46 to 48 Oldsmobile, probably an 88. Uh, the 98 was a more expensive model, but they looked almost the same. And this chances are had maybe a straight six or a straight eight cylinder. Oldsmobiles were the first cars actually with automatic transmissions. And it was of course become known later on to all cars for decades as a hydromatic. Here's what's known as a shoebox Ford in a 1949-50 Ford seen in Connecticut in 2001 when I went to see my friend Daryl Gaetano. And um, yeah, that's the thing. I look at all these cars, you know, just glorious times, and now it's just like, fuck, I can't even go anywhere. Lots of memories, though, lots of memories. I've said to a couple of you, I said, if I ever were to die, i got so many memories to take with me. If not with friends that are my even not friends now with whatever, cars, 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 cars. And my friend Scott, I mentioned before, from uh, from Cold War Motors there, uh, that web uh, channel on YouTube, I mean, fellow YouTuber, I mean, he's just a complete car fanatic. Unbelievable. And it's always good to know there's another weirdo like you out there. It's great to know. Speaking of weird, well, this is definitely not weird. This was your usual fare back in the 40s and 50s. 46 to 48 Ford. Actually, wait, let me look at it. The plate. I think the Quebec plate says 48, but it could say 46. I don't know. Mint condition. Looks like the family back there. This was, I think, in the uh, Olympic Stadium Park. Again, 21 years ago, I'd say. It looks like a Pontiac or Chevy next to it. And another working man's car, Ford Model A, uh, 1927 to 31, at the Laval uh, Weekly Cruise Night Show. Uh, funny thing, I've been going to the show also a very long time, and they moved around. They've moved into different areas twice. Only engine for these cars is a four, four cylinder, and then, of course, you have your famous. Auga horn because that's the sound it makes when you when it you know bronks around you know, like, ah, 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 I can't do it anyway whatever check out this rarity very rare even though it's just a uh, a hulk of, of mostly a car uh, what's left of it is, I mean this is a very rare car this is a cord Hollywood I think and if it's not a Hollywood it's a what is an L37 and actually that's when they came out and uh, the front end looked like a coffin. These are ex very rare cars, extremely desirable and amazing. Amazing that I saw this and other very rare cars at this guy's collection in um, Utica, Ontario, I think, when I went down to Kenosha with my friend James. But um, yeah, we went through Ontario first and we took our time. We didn't go there directly, you know, we went to look at other car stuff and uh, I think the guy who owned the place, very friendly guy, I think his name was Eric Thomas. He did restorations. Man, he had some cool cars there. Holy shit. Eric, if you ever see this, hello to you, sir. Hello to anybody that I've ever met that sees this and then connects the dots. Oh, man, he had a, oh, man, he had a 61 Dodge they were restoring. A 61 Dodge? What else did he had? He had, like, a Hudson, like, a, oh, my God, a Hudson Theraplane. He had a, a, he had, like, a 48 Federal truck. Great tasting cars. This photo, speaking of bizarro, it's bizarre cars. I like how this is getting more and more interesting. I didn't even like, you know, put this in a certain sequence for you to see these. Now, when I was talking about the orange julep before, there was this cat I met back in 2001. He shows up this fucking awesome uh, black 58 T-Bird. And I think it was like the only one I've ever seen 58. 58 is the rarest out of the three, 58, 59, 60. And he tells me he has this car, 56 Plymouth Suburban Wagon. Can you believe that? Never saw this one though. But he gave me this picture. He's a very friendly guy. Uh, you know, if I ever find the car, the, the photos of the T-Bird, maybe they're a bit scattered. I'll show them to you. And uh, yeah, actually, you know, I remember his name. He had a really cool name. He was Quebecois, but I think he was part native because he also had a big dream catcher from his uh, uh, rearview mirror. If you don't know what that is, Google it. And um, 
Yeah, because his name was Willie Dubois. Sounds like a, like an actor or something, you know? Continuing with Orphan Cars, uh, how is this for a cool, beautiful oldie? 64 Studebaker um, Cruiser. And uh, just, just a smart, stout-looking car, you know? Uh, you had your choice of a six-cylinder V8, 289 V8. Not to be confused with a Ford V8, by the way. Hey, uh, just going off uh, subject, anybody interested in the mangled up uh, Quebec license plate? Let me know. I'll ship that to you, no problem. Ten bucks. Well, ten bucks for the shipping, five bucks for the plate. All right, well, we're moving along there. We're getting along there. Get along, little doggies. Woof. How's that for beautiful? Wait a minute, why am I zoomed in so much? Jesus Christ. All right, look at this pair of beauties. The only time I ever went to the orange julep. Going there now almost uh, 20 years or more. Yeah, 20 years, maybe 21. And look at this beautiful pair of uh, 64 5 Thunderbirds there, eh? Aren't they gorgeous? Right here in Montreal, back in the good old days. Talked about my friend Rene before, my ex-friend Rene. I hate to say he's ex, but uh, what can I tell you? Things happen, people change, you know? As some of you guys you know, especially you're about my age or older. Boy, that's one of the unpleasant surprises of life is when you see how people you thought you knew, they fucking changed. And I'm not going to go into what happened with this guy, but... Uh, he still has, as much as he changed, as much as he became fucking money hungry, he still has that 64 Impala, as far as I know. Saw him drive it a couple of times. Had a restored purple metallic, white top, continental kit, 57 Chevy seats that were two-tone black and white. He had the dingle balls hanging around the fucking, uh, you know, around the windows. I mean, it's just, he put a, it, it was just an amazing car, and definitely the coolest lowrider in Montreal and maybe even Quebec at that time. And I'm going back like when we we're still friends, like, you know, 2008 and before. But again, the bottom fell out with him and me and uh, like so many friends I've had. And this was uh, in the Villaray sector of Montreal. I took some many photos of that car. Uh, that was in 2003, 2004. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, and uh, moving along, uh, beginning of going back to good old days. Uh, another cat I met at the old Orange Julep. He had this fantastic Canadian 68 Pontiac Strata Chief two door post, which is, of course, always rare. A two door post, not a hard top. Two door posts are always rare for a lot of cars, especially 60s. And uh, beautiful fucking car. It's not the original color. It's like a mental metallic green. But even the trunk was so clean, I had to get a picture of it. And uh, I remember this guy. His name was Martin. Martin, si jamais tu vois ça, fais-moi un heads up there. Let me know. All right. Back to uh, Orphan Cars. Look at this. Another beautiful Studebaker. And actually, I forgot to mention where the other one... That I just showed you where it was. This one here. These were both at the same show. This was in Sherburne, Vermont. Oh, there was some beauties there. And I remember I went there with my friend James. I talked about the beginning with a 69 Ambassador Wagon DPL. And we're on our way to this fucking show one morning. This cool, uh, I don't know, May or April. Uh, probably, yeah, cool May uh, morning. And I'm like, shit, I forgot my camera. So we stopped at a store and I bought a disposable uh, Kodak camera. So... Better than nothing. Good old bullet hole, bullet hole, bullet nose Studebaker, circa 1950-51. Yeah, where Studebakers, man, they lacked in fucking uh, quality, they made up in style, big time. Speaking of style, this is the last time I, I uh, no, I saw this car years later at the Orange Julep. I was happy I did because I got a, a, a great pick of the fins. This is a very rare 58 Buick Limited Roadmaster. That was the last year for the Roadmaster. And this is one of the coolest 50s crews I've ever seen. Just enormous. Like the 58 Oldsmobile gobs of chrome. Again, back at that Sherburn show. Look at this. Let's speed this up here. Look at this. Studebaker Hawk. Um, I think it was a uh, 61, 60. Because they, you know, before that, they didn't have like that stripe with the chrome moldings. Beautiful. The guy was about to load it into a trailer there. Trailer Queen. I guess maybe because it's a Studebaker, it has to be a, st a Trailer Queen, maybe, eh? Anyway, but you know, when it's that old, I mean, even that was in 2002. At the same show, the Sherburn Show in Vermont, look at that. Isn't that fucking absolutely beautiful? Isn't that absolutely beautiful? The, cr the classic Chrysler Airflow, the car that was too futuristic for its time. Kind of like the Tucker, because the front end was so rounded. 
and um, you can see there's an old steamship there now obviously if this was if I had been in the mentality more interested and open-minded to things at that time I would have checked out that ship but you know at that time I was really cars 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 man there was a lot of fucking Studebakers that show holy shit I didn't realize it actually I mean look at that that's what's great about the states you know that's just shows how in Canada we don't have a, it shows in Canada often how we don't have as much money as Americans because you'll see some cool cars at car shows even Granby but look at that you think I'd ever see a Studebaker president in Granby circa you know 55 in 50, I think they only made this one like this year, like that. This that year it was only 55, I think, because 56 the Hawk came out, I think, and it had the fins. Of course, that body style, as you saw the other one, there like that. Yeah, it was carried until 63, and by 63 you could have an R2 option of a turbo, supercharged. Another another beautiful old car that was at that show. Look, all original was the 60. 62 63 Chevy 2 Nova convertible lovely little car mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and another one at that show as well was this beautiful uh, uh, second to last year 1960 DeSoto Adventurer which was basically a Chrysler at that point uh, but just really beautiful colors and you know four-door hardtop nice max power has probably come from a 361 <coughs> And we're on my figure. Well, I didn't think I was going to do this in one take, but what the hell? We're almost done. Anyway, in case this thing conks out, I mean, I got another battery. I got the phone there. Beauty. I hope this car was restored. I really do. Because uh, this is the kind of car in that kind of condition that, that thousands of them have been scrapped just because they could have been saved. They could have had a body work done, engine work, uh, you know, normal things, repaint, cleaning, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. But it's so expensive and it's time consuming and, and just like this car could have been scrapped too. And I, I don't know, there's something, hang on. Yeah, I don't know, uh, that badge there on the fender, I can't make it on of a loop. But uh, I think that's, yeah, it's probably at least a 390 V8 in that. That's probably why I would save that and it's a coupe. And hey, speaking of James, I'm glad this is in here. Look, that was... The, the car we kept talking about a few times his 69 daily driver 69 ambassador wagon and when we went down to Kenosha Wisconsin and then later to see his brother in Indiana and then we went to shows in Pennsylvania and saw friends he had friends all over and then New York I mean the car only failed us when two uh, you know two tires blew out because we had the whole fucking rear filled with our stuff and not only that boxes filled with books uh, even this uh, one of them which we did a collaboration where he did wrote the text and I did the drawings and I even still have a copy of course I'd never get rid of that I would hope Jimmy you see this actually come to think of it because I don't want you to know how much man, we had a, such a great time and, and met a lot of people and saw so many amazing cars all in the all from the comforts of that that AMC with the avocado fucking green interior I'm gonna show more of that pictures of that car um, uh, later and you know had 343 v8 you know no pollution restriction whatsoever i mean uh, i don't even remember the mileage but it, it's just you know you're you're listening to am stations like all these stations you remember not just one time but a few times we went to the states and and uh you know you're listening to stuff like it's it's like you're in a time machine i always tell that the people when you're in old cars that's the closest thing you can get to a time machine is you have the music at that time with that car i mean you're listening you're listening to this uh, driving going uh Listening to stuff like "We Are Stardust," "We Are Golden," and we've got to get a amazing. I'll never forget it. And just like any other classic car I ever rode in from, especially the '70s and, and, and older. Um, I think this was at the same show. I'm not sure now, actually. I don't know why the. Things look a little different. I think it was at the same show, but next to the road or something, and you had to go all the way down there. I don't know. 57, beautiful 57 Pontiac Star Chief. Yeah, again, in uh, Sherburne, Vermont. Lovely car. Lovely. Love, love those 57s. Okay, one for you muscle car guys. Uh, again, going back 20 years about. Uh, fantastic. Um, Roadrunner, 71. Yeah, yeah, like, sorry, the... The uh, battery, the camera has, uh, shuts off automatically there uh, when it's 
recorded too long. But yeah, that was in Saint Genevieve in the uh, western part of the city. Very cool stuff. I don't have a doubt that still exists. Muscle cars have not faded in popularity. Now here's a picture. This is one of my most favorite shots I've ever taken. And I would like to one day get enlarged or even perhaps do a painting of it because it looks like it was taken in the 70s. But actually in reality, I took this photo 21 years ago. So, uh, some street not far from here in East End, I don't know, Delormier, Papineau, Christophe Colomb, from my friend's 77 Buick Le Sabre looking at a, a Mustang from the, about the same year. Is that cool or what? And the effect with the mirror, the, the, the reflection you see in the mirror as well. It's just, and the, that Mustang, I remember I took pictures of it like, oh my God, like 12 years later in a parking lot and there was this white cat that got kind of in front of it. It was kind of cool, you know. All right, guys, we're almost done. Two more pictures. Lovely, lovely 56 Ford Fairlane, two-door hardtop, not a rare car, still desirable, just beautiful lines, beautiful classic 50s design, two-tone paint, continental kit, uh, you know, eye-catching uh, blue uh, fender skirts. It's just got the right stuff. That was actually my friend Fern Carrier's dealership in, uh, well, dealership. He's a little guy, you know, in Alexandria, Ontario. He's still there. He's a... Uh, I think he's probably still selling old cars, I don't know, but amazing. At that time, he had a 68 Mercury pickup. Pff, amazing. Mint condition, low mileage, and he even had the Canadian equivalent of this car, 56 Meteor Niagara, but I don't even know if he ever sold it. He's tried to sell it for years, but not, nobody wanted it because it was light yellow and white. And last but not least, on a heavier gauge of paper, because it was printed in the States uh, in 2001, I went to see my friend who lived in Trumbull, Connecticut, and this was in Langford, Quebec, uh, Langford, Stratford, Connecticut, excuse me, 57 Thunderbird at a, a dealer there, and uh, man, I saw a lot of old cars down there at that time. What about that? But what I like about this shot, even though the, I took this with the defective Vivitar cameras, I like how out of focus the background is, and I actually believe it's also because of the fact that the uh, there was very windy, I think, that day, if I'm not mistaken. But I could be wrong. Anyway, well, you guys, I hope you like that stuff. And uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for watching. I'm actually going to go upload that right now to the computer because it's such a long video. And uh, <clears throat> I always like to keep the batteries charged so that there's no surprises, you know. Especially if I run into something that's take a long time to film, like a train or a walk or maybe a fire somewhere or something. So, um... Yeah, that's it. And uh, yeah, yeah, I always look forward to to hearing any of you guys who had cars like this, or you knew anybody like that, and uh, whatever, man. That's what YouTube is all about. It's not just about us and getting our jollies off on uh, things we love or people, but you know, sharing between us and the, the the community, and for us guys specifically, the old car community. So there you go. So thanks for watching. Bye.